Hey, hey developers, today we are gonna look at all the different ways that you can add CSS to your view project that you may never use before in the past. So did you know that you can add dynamic CSS, you can add CSS modules, you can create selectors that are deep, you can create global selectors, you can do a lot of different things. So we're gonna take a look at a few of those concepts and we're gonna create a really basic app in the process. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. If you like these type of videos, click that subscribe button. That helps me out. Yeah, let's just uh, jump into the video. Okay, so here is an app that I created. You can see here on the right-hand side, it says information box has some lorem ipsum text and has some other information at the bottom. And the way the app is structured, you can see here in the left-hand side, I have uh, a my comp, a very poorly named component right here called my comp. And then I have some other info, which I put at the top. And uh, right here is the my comp component. It just has a template and it has some CSS in here for my comp and info. And then it also has a class called other which is this at the bottom. You can see here this lorem ipsum text is coming from this class other and it's styled with font style ital italic, some margin top, some bold. And so the first thing I wanna show you guys is how this CSS, CSS is kind of interacting with together. Right here I have this div class other, some other info, and you can see right away that it's sharing the styles with the, with the my comp component. So if I go in here and let's say I wanna actually add styles to my comp on this parent component because I'm an app.view and this, some, this component right here, this information box is in the my comp component. If let's say I add in for other and I wanna add in, I don't know, I'm gonna do font size, three rem and color purple. So if I do that, you can see now it has changed throughout the app. So it changed the top right here, the some other info, and it changed the bottom. And this bottom text, just to remind you guys, if you look in the my comp, that's inside this other one. So we have the same class name in two different places. But let's say we didn't want that. We didn't want the whole app to change because we use this other class in two different places. And we want to actually be separated. Now, the obvious, most obvious answer you're probably thinking of is, yeah, just change the name from other but let, let's say that we have several different, like hundreds of different components, and we're bound to end up using the same class in one component versus another. So the, one simple way of fixing this is that Vue has something called styled scope components. So right here, you see the style on the screen. I can just put in scoped like this, and I'll save it. And you can see now that it's sort of fixed our problem we do have the correct font size right here, but this one, uh, we still have the color purple. It looks like it didn't quite work right. So if I take a look at the inspector and I take a look here, you can see this one, this is right. I have three rem and purple. Like that's what I set up in the app view for the style for this div. However, down here, if I look at this, I see I have the other data with, this is the other, because I did the style scope. So what happens when you add in the scoped, it adds in these data attributes and the data attributes uh, will pick up on everything you have in here. So it only is scoped to that component. But if I scroll down, it also picked up the other because it has the class of other on it. So now it kind of sort of combined both of them. So now we have this color purple here, which is not what we want. So to fix this, uh, we can go back to the app view and you're probably thinking, okay, well, we can add scoped here too. So if I type style scoped and save it, cool. So now this is the right text. It doesn't have any weird purple text to it anymore, but you notice everything kind of shifted. This is looking right, but what happened to this padding that I had around everything? And I had everything centered. Well, if we go back over here, we notice that this app, right here is sort of like a universal way. It's the ID for app. It's kind of like a universal way in view to add styles to the whole app. How can we add this to our global styles? It shouldn't be scoped to this component. It should be for the whole app. So one interesting way of doing this, and there's a couple different ways, is we can just surround this app with global and with a colon at the front, global. And if we save it, 
Cool, so we're back to where we are right now. So it looks fine again. This is kind of a weird syntax. You know, if I was in a production app and I saw this everywhere, I'd be like, why do we have like this global selector everywhere? It's kind of weird. So another way to do it is we can just have multiple style tags. So instead of putting this global here, and I'll save it here. So now we're back to the ugly look. In the style tag that has no scoped on it, I can simply, there we go, and I delete this global. Cool, so now in one component, I can have my global and my scoped in one place. I don't really love this, but I think it's acceptable if it's in. this is a small application and you put this in the app view, which is kind of the root component in your view app. You obviously, if you have multiple components in your app, you wouldn't want to put in multiple global styles everywhere because it'd be really confusing and you'd have to search every time you ever wanted to change something and eventually someone would actually overwrite one of your global. So probably a better way of doing this is to just create your own CSS folder. So I would go here, new file, do CSS styles.css. There we are. So that created the folder and file. Now I can simply go back into my app view and I can just copy or cut it out of here, go back to my styles and paste it. And then in my app view, I'll delete this style here. And then I'll go back, I'll go to my main file, which is kind of the entry point of the app. And then I just simply need to import it in. So I can do dot CSS styles dot CSS. And if we say here, that's not the right style, if I save it. Cool, so now we have our, all our global styles in this one file, but in each individual component, we can then do our overwrites and I'll do our scope styles in here. So the next scenario I wanna kinda of talk about is let's say, let's say we wanted to change this lorem ipsum text, but we didn't want to go into the actual my comp to change it inside here because we only wanna change it inside this one component. So maybe we have deeply nested components or we have a route and we didn't wanna change it, this text color here. Now you're probably thinking, well easy, now we can do a couple different ways. We can use a prop, we can pass down props, we can use a dollar sign adders, we can basically have anything you pass into the component being copied directly into the top level root element or anywhere you want. And I've actually done a video on that, so if you guys are interested in in how you kind of use dollar sign adder, um, yeah, check it, take a look here. There's actually a CSS way to do this, and it's kind of built into view. And the way to do that is, I can actually put in colon, and then I'll put in deep, and then the name of the class that I want to overwrite, or it could be anything, any kind of selector. So I'm gonna do other, and now I can change this to whatever I want. Let's say I want to have this be green. So I'll do color. Cool, so now this is green. It didn't affect this other tag here. Uh, and so now I've been able to deeply go into the child components and change it directly from the top component that it's in, in this app view. So this is kind of a powerful pattern. You wouldn't wanna do this everywhere. I could see how some developers would get confused because if you're using this deep selector everywhere, like things wouldn't work correctly and people are gonna have to search and figure out how this is working. But it's a nice tool that we have in our tool bag for view. Now there's actually a, another popular pattern that I've seen a lot, especially in the React ecosystem and it's been in the Vue ecosystem for a few years and I don't see too many people using it, but it's there and that's where you can use CSS modules. And nice thing about it, it's built into our Vue app here. I'm using V, but it works with Vue CLI and it just works out of the box. So I can just change the scoped here to module. And now I can use this uh, module imports anywhere in, in my app here. And the way it works is you just put in, so if I save it like this, now you can see I have no styling on this some other info. I can just put dollar sign style. And if I save it there, oh, and one last thing, you have to actually put a colon here. Don't forget to do that. <laughs> now you can see here it's actually styled, which is awesome because it I have been able to use this the CSS modules, and I'll delete this. You can see here, I have my styles here. If I wanna change this, I don't know, to orange. You can see here, it's working correctly. So this dollar sign style is sort of only in this component, it's sort of like scope components, but it does it a little bit differently. We're not adding that data attribute. If you look at it here, it kind of has it as this unique class 
where it puts the underscore other in here, it's not trying to add in like a data attribute and it makes a very unique ID that will be unique to this whole app. So there's no way that you can accidentally reuse it. I've heard with scoped, uh, if you use style scope, that there is a slight chance that those could be reused again. But with these CSS modules, this is unique. And if you want to, you can actually change the name of it. So if, I don't know if I wanna change this to blah. I can change the name here to blah without the dollar sign at the beginning. And it works the same way. So if I put this to purple, yep, still working as I expected. So definitely if you wanna kind of be the most safe with your scope CSS and you wanna have these unique identifiers, then I would use CSS modules. I think style scoped works in most instances. There's one other thing too, you can actually kind of use dynamic CSS and there's a bunch of different ways I've done this in the past. Since you put the colon in front of this, it kind of binds this class so you can have some sort of function in here that does it, but you can actually uh, have it directly inside this color here. Now I have style module blah here, but this will work the same if we're not even using CSS modules, if we're just using our normal style tag. So I can do something like this. I can do const color and I'm going to call it, uh, let's say, green, and then I can bind that directly inside my styles here, which is kind of cool. So I can do vbind, and then the name I put in there, color. And by the way, I'm using script setup here. If you're not familiar with that, I did a whole video on script setup, which uh, I'll teach you all about it and how you should probably use it in some of your Vue 3 apps. Well, you should use it. So if I save it here, now you can see here, I have green text here, as I expected. And I can actually have this dynamic. So let's say I wanted to add in ref. So I'm gonna add in this ref and make this reactive. And then I can have a new button here, I suppose, and change color to red. Very explicit. But you could have it do a whole bunch of things if you wanted to. So I'm gonna have an at click handler and all it's gonna do is gonna take color and equal uh, red, if I did that right. So now I still have some other info here, but when I click the change color to red, it changes to red. So that's kind of a neat way to do this. I think I like this way better than trying to add in like dynamic classes and make a function in here. And I, I kind of like this V bind. I, I definitely like that this is a possibility of doing. So this is a lot of information I went over quick. So if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I occasionally look through them. And yeah, and if you want more information about CSS and, and view. I did a bunch of different videos on it. You can check here and learn more. Thanks.